Coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. If I come to you and tell you that God knows how bad it is, God knows you have no children for 10 years, God knows you've got this pain in your body, God knows about this lump that is growing, God knows he's fully aware. He was aware when the first symptoms started. Each time you scream at night, he knows. And if your next thought is then why? What am I doing wrong? That God has not done something about it. That's your problem. My prayers for you are full of praise to God as I give him thanks for you with great joy. I'm so grateful for our union and our enduring partnership that began the first time I presented to you the gospel. I pray with great faith for you because I'm fully convinced that the one who began this gracious work in you will faithfully continue the process of maturing you until the unveiling of our Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine, making request for you all with joy, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. because nothing is impossible with you. Thank you. As our hands are lifted up, we acknowledge your presence. We acknowledge your power. We acknowledge the truth of your word. And we agree that nothing is impossible with you. So we thank you. So we thank you for the healings, for divine health, which is your will for your children. We give you praise. 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 Give you praise. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Healing is indeed the children's bread. And this morning we're going to eat that bread. Are you ready to eat that bread and receive your healing? If there's any part of your body that isn't functioning the way it's meant to function, by the time you leave here, it will be functioning properly. It's just as simple as that. Is there any part of your body that isn't doing what it was meant to do? Doesn't matter how long it has been like that. By the time you live here, it shall be fixed. In the name of Jesus, whether your case is called out or it is not called out, it's irrelevant. Just know that any part of your body that isn't doing what it was meant to do, whether it is internal or 
it is external. Whether it is hereditary or not. When you leave here, it shall be doing what he was meant to do. Somebody who believes that, shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. Today I'm going to be telling you a story of great faith for healing. That is the title of my message. A story of great faith for healing. And the ladies sang, Healing is the Children's Bread, which is really the text I'm going to be teaching from. A story of great faith for healing. This is the healing miracle of the Syrophoenician woman's daughter, which is found in Matthew 15 and in Mark 7. Matthew 15 and Mark 7. This story shows a very important principle, and that's the principle of positioning where your healing is concerned. Let's make it very simple. If your healing is located in this place and you are located here, will you receive your healing? So in order to receive your healing, what do you need to do? Move to where your healing is. Well, to do that, first of all, you need to know where your healing is, right? When you know where your healing is, then you need to be able to move. Now, the movement we're talking about is not necessarily physical. I'm not talking about traveling from Potaka to Benin because your healing is in Benin and you can't be healed in Potaka. I'm talking about moving in a way that is more than physical. Moving in your heart, moving by your revelation, moving by your understanding, changing some of the things you used to believe and that makes you move to get to the place where your healing is. This woman we're going to read about had to move. And when she moved, and we'll see what she did that made her move and make the connection to the place where her healing for her daughter was. Amen. Matthew 15, 21. Then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him and said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away for she cries after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O oh woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Mark chapter 7, same story. Few other things are seen here. 24. From there he arose and went to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house and wanted to know, and wanted no one to know it, but it could not be hidden. For a woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him, and she came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she kept asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, for it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she answered and said to him, yes, Lord, even the little dogs under the table eat from the children's crumbs 
Then he said to her, for this say, go your way. The demon has got out of your daughter. And when she had come to her house, she found the demon gone out and her daughter lying on the bed. So this woman started somewhere. I put it to you that where she started from was not a point of faith. How do I know that? Well, Jesus didn't answer her. And Jesus never ignores faith. Say that after me. Jesus never, never ignores faith. If it is faith, it has Jesus' attention. So where she was, wasn't a point of faith. But where we found her, eventually, was a point where Jesus said she had great faith. So it means she moved. Everybody says she moved. She repositioned herself. From having no faith, wasn't worth Jesus' attention, to a point where Jesus said, ah, I salute you. This is great faith. Today you will move in the name of Jesus. Today you will make that shift. If you're at a place now of no faith, a place where it seems you're not getting any answers, you will move by the time you hear the word of God. Because that's what the word of God does. It builds faith in you to where you can be called someone of great faith. Amen. Amen. We're going to find out three things she did that helped her reposition herself. This, I said, is a story of great faith for healing. Let me tell you the first thing she did. We see here that she had a very bad situation. It was really bad. Everyone say it was really bad. So she came with a bad situation to the full view and hearing of Jesus. She made sure so Jesus saw her and Jesus heard her. The Bible says she cried out. That word in the Greek is a word that shows severe anguish. It shows someone that shrieks and shouts. Is anybody here in the drama ministry? Anybody here? Okay. Oh, yeah, you're here. Oh, I forgot that you were here. <laughs> this is a drama crew. <laughs> so now you're going to shriek. No, wait, so let me... I will tell you first what you're going to do before you do it. They're talking about really, your child is in a bad shape and she's at home. And you want Jesus' full attention. So you came to his face right there, right in his front. And the Bible says she cried out loudly. That's the word kako. She, she, kako she says yearly, rather. That's another word, um, 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 kraso, yes. She, she croaked, she screamed, she called aloud, she shrieked. She exclaimed, she entreated him in anguish, deep pain. Cry out. No, 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 you're facing me. And you're going to hit the floor because you want me to see that your child is badly. Help me. Yeah, try again. No, 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 no. Yeah. Pause. Jesus is compassionate. Is he not? Uh, is Jesus wicked? What do you mean? Very good. Why don't you even move just now, small by that? Didn't he touch your heart? He touched you. He touched me too. So if he touched me, me, human being, Jesus, compassionate Jesus, uh, what's he thought? What, what is he meant to do? Hey, um, please stand up. Stand up, my dear. I've heard you. Your child, you say it's a demon. Oh, well, I'll take care of you. Oh, oh, don't cry again. Don't cry. How old is she? Oh, poor child. You know, go home. Go home. That's not what he did. That's not what he did. That is not what he did. What did he do? Jesus, she was on the floor, screaming, severely demon-possessed. 
Yeah, Peter, what were you saying? Compassionate Jesus. Why did he do that? Because that was nothing more than emotional blackmail. Great faith for healing. Great faith for healing realizes that God is not moved by the severity of your case. Great faith for healing realizes that God is not moved by the severity of your case. The Philip says she came crying at the top of her voice. Lord, have pity on me. My daughter is in a terrible state. A devil has got into her. Amplified says she came with a loud, troublesomely urgent cry. Begged. My daughter is miserably and distressingly and cruelly possessed by a demon. But the Bible says, Jesus answered her, not a word. If you come to God with emotional blackmail, he will ignore you. If you come for a healing meeting with emotional blackmail, he will ignore you. God is not moved by how you feel. He's not moved by how bad you look. He's not moved by how long it has been. I repeat, God is not moved by how you feel. He's not moved by how bad you look. He's not moved by how long it has been. Why? Because none of those things gives you a right to healing. But we often come with that right of privilege. Lord, do you know how long it has been? You begin to inform God. Like God's, first of all, let me ask, what does omnis, omniscience mean? Huh? All knowing. He knows everything. So why do you come and inform God about your sickness as if his omniscience went on vacation? The other day I went to the doctor. Yeah, 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 in prayer. Yeah, in prayer. <laughs> After I went to the first specialist. But I, I met the second one. And I did a scan. And, and the scan result said I'm going to die, Lord. <laughs> if I what they said, that we begin, we begin to give God breaking news. So question, where was his omniscience when all of that was happening? You think he, you think he doesn't know? Let me shock you. God knows how sick you are. He knows. He knows that pain in your body. He knows. If your next question in your mind, if your next question, when I tell you God knows how sick you are and God knows how bad it is, if your next question in your mind, if the next thing that occurs to you is then why hasn't he done anything about it? You have seen your problem. If anybody here had that next thought, if he knows, then why hasn't he done anything about it? Shows me the problem. It means you don't know that he has done everything about it. If I come to you and tell you that God knows how bad it is, God knows you have no children for 10 years, God knows you've got this pain in your body. God knows about this lump that is growing. God knows. He's fully aware. He was aware when the first symptoms started. Each time you scream at night, he knows. And if your next thought is then why? What am I doing wrong? That God has not done something about it. That's your problem. You don't know. That God has done everything about it. So you are waiting 
for God to find out about it and then do something about it. He's not moved by the severity of your case. So when pastors come to you and lie to you and think, make you think that the, the worst, the pro, the, <laughs> I speak English here now. Which one is it? The bad, the problem is. <laughs> if the problem is worse, therefore it gives you a better right to your healing. It's not true. Somebody with malaria that has faith will get healed faster than somebody with cancer who needs the healing not to die but has no faith. Hear me well. You are lying on the bed with malaria. Malaria, drugs can help you. It's not likely to kill you easily. But if you are with malaria and you have faith, and then you're with cancer. You've been given one month to live. You need to live. If you are to wear it, who needs the miracle more? It's cancer. But if cancer has no faith, God will, compassionate God will ignore cancer. And compassionate God will heal malaria. Hey. Kind of gospel we don't like here in Abi. God is meant to ignore malaria. No be malaria. My own na cancer. You wear it like a coat. This woman wore her own like a coat. God ignored her. I mean, there are times the sovereign, merciful move of God will bypass even the faithless and just will sweep over the people. And God will visit you and heal you. But you see, he's sovereign. Which means it may or may not happen that way. So don't be planning your healing around the sovereign move of God. It's better to develop your faith and be able to take your healing because it's yours. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So she tried emotional blackmail. The next thing she tried was spiritual blackmail. Why do I say that? The two portions of scripture we read, we saw her called a woman of Canaan, a Greek, a Syrophoenician woman. All those names and identities show that she was not a Jew. She was a Gentile. She was of the common life we learned about last night. She had no relationship with Jesus. She had no right to relate with him on covenant terms. But she called him son of David. Son of David is a covenant name reserved for the Jews. She had no business doing that. So she thought, if I throw out my emotions, cry, it doesn't work. Let me tap into what I hear the Jews calling him. She had no right to do that. Next. On Fresh Dew. Baby, babe, babe, man is babe, woman is babe, you're all babe. It's what's ready now, babe. But you've not built a relationship. We can see there's nothing between both of you. Nothing but anko uniform. But you're calling yourselves babe. That's what she was doing. Calling Jesus babe. But she had no relationship with him. Jesus ignored her. Are you alive, but not really living life? Do you know somewhere deep down that something needs to change in the course of your life? Does it feel like you have lost your way in life? Yet to others, you seem to know your way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Can you believe that somewhere on the inside of you? Do you believe it? He is the answer to every question and he loves you just the way you are. 
today he's waiting for you with arms open wide and he wants you just the way you are. Will you make a decision today to surrender your life to him and run into those outstretched arms? If you want to do that, say this prayer out loud, meaning it from the depth of your heart and you will be saved. Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I believe you are the Son of God and that you died for me and rose again just to save me. Come into my heart and make me brand new as you have promised. I will live for you all the days of my life. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Congratulations on taking the most important decision of your life. You are now born again and a brand new person. It has all happened on the inside of you. Now you need to grow in your new faith. And what has happened on the inside will surely be reflected in your everyday life. We can help you grow in your new faith. Please call us at 0700 Fresh Dew or email us at saved at freshdew.tv and we'll be here for you. Table 2023, our 33rd anniversary. Join Pastor Nkechi Ene, our host, and Pastor Suska Forbes, our guest speaker, by 9 a.m. Sunday, the 2nd of July, 2023. Music by Namsi Oken, Ruth Owade, and the New Wine Choir of the Carpenters Church. Live at the Carpenters Church, the Carpenters Drive, of Ajip or Iwafe Road, Mile 4 Rumeme, Port Harcourt. You can also stream live at live.tcchurch.online. Romans 10 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow, and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Fresh Dew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Fresh Dew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.